In our next series of videos, we're going to look at some lathe design functionality as well as some C-axis cross drilling. I've already opened up a previous part, the uh, 2D nose piece that we did before. And the first thing I want to do with this is to turn off the toolpath display for all of those toolpaths that we already did. Next, I'm going to rotate the part around a little bit. What I want to do is turn this part into a solid model. Because when we drew the outer profile, we also drew a closed boundary through the center line. It's very easy to take this and revolve this profile around the center line. To do that, we're going to select Solids and we're going to use the Revolve function. It asks us to select the chain so I can pick this profile anywhere. It's all connected together. And we're going to OK that. Now it asks us the line to be used as the axis. So this is the axis that we're rotating around to revolve the profile. So when I pick this line as the axis, we get a little circle down there and something showing us the direction. Now if that looks like the correct direction for the rotation, we can say OK. Now at this point, we can give the solid a name and there's only one choice, which is to create a solid body. I can tell it the starting angle and the ending angle. In this case, for a lathe part, we want it to rotate 360 degrees. So there really isn't too much to change here. We're just going to say OK. And there's my part. Now, of course, I could have put that on a different level. I could have made it a different color, but uh, it's fine the way it is being green. Next, I want to grab some coordinates off of this. I want to find some dimensions, and I want to find these as lathe dimensions. So I'm going to switch back to a top view, and I'm going to set my plane back to a lathe diameter D plus Z plus. And I'm going to do an analyze for a position. And I'm going to grab this endpoint right here. So that's an outer diameter here of 3 inches. And that corner is at a Z position of minus 2.8. Now what we're going to do next is to create some circles and some points that we can use for creating drilled holes around this part of the cylinder. So we'll probably create it at a diameter of 3 inches at a Z of maybe minus 3.3. .3. So that'll be a, about a half inch in from this edge. So you can just OK that Analyze. And I think before I do my holes, I'm going to pick a different color. So I'm going to pick this uh, brown color here, OK that, and I might even pick a different line style, a solid line style, and a different thickness. So I want to create a series of holes that goes around that diameter. And the easiest way to do that is go to Create, Bolt Circle. Now it says select the position for the base point. Well, I want it to be on center, but I want it to be 3.3 inches in from the front. So what I'm going to do is just hold down my shift key and then pick the center point at the front. That allows me to do a shifted position, or what they call a delta coordinate, or what you might call an incremental reference. So from that front center point, I want to be at a Z of minus 3.3. So it creates a bolt circle right now. Now right now it's just live geometry. We could tell it things here like what do we want the radius to be? I'll tell it I want the radius to be an inch and a half. But I can see it's rotating around the top view. So what I can do is change the rotary axis. So right now it's rotating around the X because I turned this on. And we can see now those holes look like they are around the outside of that cylinder. Now we could tell it the number of holes that we want and the angle between holes. We can also tell it, uh, I believe this is the starting angle. And if we want it to draw an arc, or if we want it to draw points, 
So arcs, uh, let's say we actually want 3 8 diameter holes. So I'll say 375, and I'll tell it that I want points at the center of those holes. I think if I do an F3 to repaint, or maybe zoom up on it a little bit, you can see those points a little bit better. So that's it. We just basically created a bolt circle that wraps around the x-axis. We have eight holes, 45 degrees apart, on an inch and a half radius. It's going to give us a 375 diameter arc with a point at the center. And we'll say OK to that. Now I don't really need to do this next thing, but it's a design function that you might be interested in. If I actually want this to look like a real hole going into the solid model, I can go back to solids and tell it I want to do an extrude. And what I'm going to do is pick this one circle at the top and OK that. Now normally you would see an arrow either pointing up or pointing down. It's probably pointing down because I can't see it. If I turn off my shading by doing an Alt S, we can see the arrow pointing down. That's the direction that we're going to extrude that circle. Now I can tell it what I want to do with that extrusion. Do I want to create another solid body? Or do I want to create a cut body? Or am I adding something to this solid? What I want to do is create a hole. So I would be cutting away from this body. And I can tell it what distance to extend that by. And we'll just say these holes are going to be one inch deep. So we'll OK that. So now I have a one inch hole going into my part. Now if I wanted to do that with all the other ones, I could pick each individual hole and extrude them down into the part. But another thing that's even more handy is to go back into solids and tell it we want to do a pattern function. A pattern allows us to copy a feature on a solid model and repeat it either in a rectangular or a circular fashion or we can actually give it a manual pattern. But before I actually pick the type of pattern that I want, I'm going to go change my plane to show it which direction I want to do this in. So I want it actually on a plane viewed through the right side. So you should see plane right side here. Now we're going to go back and say solid, pattern, circular pattern. We can select the pattern or the feature on the solid that we want to copy. And I'm going to pick this hole and my selection. And I'm going to tell it I want to copy that seven more times. So we have the one plus seven more. It's going to copy them at 45 degree increments. And you could even uh, eliminate one of those instances if you wanted to, but we want all eight holes. So we're going to say OK. And there's all my holes in the solid model. Again, we didn't have to have those for the cross drilling that we're going to do, but that's just a little solid modeling design tip that I thought you might find interesting.